Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today's video will be about um, what we can learn from elephants Islamically. So, first of all, I want to begin by reciting Surah Fil, which is basically the idea behind this video. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil Alam yaja'al kaidahum fi tadliyil Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil Tarmihim bihi jaratim min sijil Faja'alahum ka asfim ma'kul so Surah Fiel is talking about an event that happened before Prophet Muhammad um, was born. Basically in that event what happened was that um, a king came into Mecca and wanted to destroy it because he had built a church and he felt like it was taking away from people from going to his church. So he took a bunch of elephants and he tried to destroy the Kaaba but Alasvanta sent uh, birds they were carrying clay which Alasvanta had made them as hard as rocks and there is multiple things we can learn from this number one we should remember to have trust in Allah so in this particular case, like the pe the people of Mecca couldn't really do much because you know at this time technology wasn't advanced and they didn't really understand what an elephant was, right? And these were desert people, right? And they weren't really used to elephants, so to them, an elephant was like some kind of alien monster or something to them because they've never seen one before. So, uh, like, they couldn't really do much anything. They had no tr uh, experience dealing with elephants. But despite all of that, Lusbata easily protected his house, you know? And that leads us to the uh, other thing we can learn, another thing, which is that Lusbata is powerful, you know? Lusbata can do anything. He's capable of anything, you know? And Allah Sponta can do anything. If he wanted to, he didn't even need the birds. He could have done it with angels. If he wanted to, he could have made it crocodiles, cows, uh, anything really. You know, and Allah Sponta is capable of all of that. Yet he chose that. And we should remember that, you know, elephants, as mighty as the thing they fe may feel like, you know, Allah can do can um, destroy them easily, you know, and this even applies for other things as well, you know. Allah is more powerful than the government, than politics, than your teacher, your test, your boss, your payment, etc., etc. Anything you think about, Allah is more powerful and he's in control. Okay. And the next thing I want to talk about was like this idea that we shouldn't kill animals randomly. I want to connect it to elephants specifically because we know that in like places like Africa and stuff where elephants exist, they sometimes get hunted hunted for their ivory um, horns. So we should remember that as much uh, that that is ha haram because you're killing these animals and you're not for a valid excuse you're not doing it for food you're doing it just for their horns and we should remember that there are things like that you know elephant horns you know in our life that will seem tempting but they'll end up causing more damage than they are worth and that's the thing about Islam and Haram, if you look at what's the goals of fiqh, one of them was, and the, one of the main goals of fiqh is to protection, protection of multiple things, your knowledge, your health, 
your religion. There's multiple things, and that's why we have fiqh and stuff. You should remember that, like people hunt these elephants just for their horns, and then create difficulty because now these elephants are going extinct. When you go after haram, don't forget that that's going to create difficulty, and there's a reason why their thing is haram. There's a reason why certain rulings are made. So, never forget that. Never forget. Don't be careful. Be careful of shaitan and be careful of how he entices you to take that elephant horn. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan kasir for watching. Please subscribe. Please like and comment and inshallah you'll get good deeds for it.